Okay, so today's exercise is to uh, teach you how to make a uh, good looking chart to reflect a uh, location's climate data, uh, which includes the average high temperature, average low temperature, and precipitation. Okay, so, uh, so on Schoology, uh, you will find this uh, Google Sheet. Uh, you click it. And uh, and now the chart is not given. Okay, so uh, this is a sample of what you are expected to see at the end of this exercise. Um, so what you can see here, it's uh, it's a chart which has two different axes. It has a title, and you can see the uh, average high temperature, average low temperature. Uh, these two data sets are represented by two lines and. The precipitations are represented by columns. Okay, so we will learn how to make this chart, and to do that, uh, let me just go ahead and delete this because that's what you will not see at the beginning. So uh, let me go ahead and delete this. So when you first click uh, the uh, Google Sheet that I posted on Schoology, you will go to File, and you will go ahead and make a copy because that's uh, that the the link that you see is my copy, and you want to. Uh, make a uh, make a modification to the sheet, so you will have to own the sheet. So you will make a copy and you will save it at your um, at your Google on your onto your Google Drive. And after you have the uh, ownership of the Google Sheet, then what you would do is to highlight the data set right here, all the way from uh, from the column uh, from the title of each column to the very last piece of data uh, right here at the very end uh, on D14 cell and then you would go to insert and you would uh, click chart okay now the default chart that Google created for you it's not that sophisticated and it's definitely not what we wanted to see so what you would do uh, what we need to do is to make some uh, adjustments to uh, to these to this chart so first we'll go to chart type and this is not what we want so we would have to uh, choose a different kind of chart and since we have both lines and columns we would have to choose this combo chart and now you can see here um, we have the uh, combo charts right here but it's still very different from what we saw earlier so uh, what we will do next is to go on customize and then uh, we'll click chart style uh, it's okay we don't have to change the background color if you want to you can always do that but uh, we're not going to waste time here and then we are going to focus on the chart title okay so uh, here we have to change our chart title and let's make a climate chart for Cova uh, Arizona Oops, sorry and uh, the font type it's fine the font size is fine uh, you can always choose to choose the alignment uh, it's up to you I don't care and uh, and you can see the horizontal axis title that's fine on uh, the vertical title uh, on the left we are going to name it as temperature and uh, I can type a little degree sign right here and and then C to stand for degree Celsius if you cannot uh, find the if you don't know how to type the degree sign that's fine you can just type degree C uh, that works too doesn't really matter as long as it uh, uh, express the uh, meaning of the title now uh, we are going to fix the uh, right axis in a moment uh, so let's just keep going for series, we are going to check on each series. Okay, we have three series um, or three data sets. Now, for average high temperature, the default is uh, to express the high temperature in columns. We don't really want that. We want to have line because it's easier for us to look into, and uh, and also the color would help. And for high temperature, it makes more sense to have a red color, so we do that. And the left axis to represent temperature. That's great. Uh, now you can choose to show data points like this uh, in this case we don't really need it because we would like to know the trend we don't really care about the, uh, the exact uh, data point uh, in this case okay um, just for your reference you can always choose the uh, thickness of the line uh, here we just stick with two two is fine and then we will go ahead to go to the average low temperature and we will change the color to blue because blue gives you the uh, sense of uh, coldness 
left axis good uh, everything is good and then we go to precipitation and we would like to use columns to represent precipitations because um, um, it's the conventional practice easier to visualize and for uh, for precipitation let's use a lighter color a lighter shade of blue to represent precipitation okay so everything is good so far in terms of the shape of the graph and uh, now uh, we also have to create a right axis and this is where we create the right axis uh, because uh, our precipitation is not measured by degrees Celsius so we have to create another axis and uh, and by creating the right axis it does not have the uh, axis title by default so we have to go back and we go to the right axis uh, right vertical axis title and then we type precipitation uh, millimeters and then we have our title okay uh, let's go to a uh, legend now you can see we have a lot of empty space right here I think it's a waste of space so let's not put our legend onto the right let's put our legend at the top so now our graph is bigger and we have less empty space it looks more pleasant all right uh, so seems like everything is good right um, horizontal axis is month good now let's look at the scale of the vertical axis okay now so far it doesn't look anything wrong because we are only doing for one location but what you would do after afterwards is to compare the charts for all 12 locations and it would make a lot more sense that you have a consistent scale for all 12 locations and some of the low temperatures of the other locations would be as low as negative 20 something degrees so for temperature we will set our lowest temperature to negative uh, 30 and uh, and the highest temperature has temperature to 50 okay so uh, once you type it uh, the chart will be automatically adjusted so we can see we have the right axis now and then for the uh, right vertical axis uh, we will have uh, minimum precipitation on zero and some location like a tropical rainforest they have a lot of rainfall each year uh, up to 200 and something millimeters so let's go ahead and put down 250 but before we do that I want you to take a look on the graph that it shows uh, right now because of the scale from 0 to 20 it looks like it has quite a lot of precipitation but when you put in 250 you can see that actually Cova Arizona does not have a lot of precipitation so it is the reason why we have to get the scale right okay and uh, I think this is how we will uh, finish our chart okay this is just like what we had at the very beginning we have the two lines and we have the columns for precipitation everything is well labeled okay and uh, now what you would do is to create a Google Doc and you will paste the chart over here now uh, you can uh, go to here the three dots here is the uh, option you can click it and it shows you the option of copy chart and when you click it or when I click it this happens it says I have to down I have to install a uh, an extension for my Google Chrome which I'm not interested to do it right now so I cannot really copy so what you would do is that you will save the image okay save the image onto your computer for now and then after you save it onto your computer you will uh, paste it onto uh, the Google Doc okay now I would suggest you to name your file as 01-cova Arizona uh, by putting 01 it just help you to order your charts because we will have 11 and 12 it gets easier when you look at it okay now after you put all the charts onto your Google Doc what you would do is to share the Google Doc with me by following this instruction uh, you click share and uh, and you will get you will click the uh, get shareable link um, and then you will have this link uh, copy copied and then you would put it onto um, onto uh, Schoology now what will happen on Schoology is this uh, you will have this on Schoology and uh, and for question two this is where you would paste your link right here and then you submit okay and there are two questions on the exercise on Schoology you have to match these locations to uh, these uh, to these uh, options and uh, you have unlimited trials to uh, finish this so make sure you get it right and I also want you to learn how to uh, spot 
the uh, how to spot the um, how to spot the um, um, how to spot the um, the characteristics of each biome. Okay, so uh, with that said, I will finish my tutorial here and uh, work hard. Uh, make sure everything is due by Sunday. Okay.